Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going through exercise 2.11 from the Art of Electronics. And in this exercise, we need to design a current sink using a NPN transistor. The question says you have a plus 5 and plus 15 volt regulated power supply available in the circuit. And we need to design a 5 milliamp NPN current sink. We are using the 5 volt supply to bias the base. And then the last part of the question says, what is the output compliance? So for this question, what I will do is explain what an NPN circuit looks like, then go on to basically calculating the components that we need. I will, I will briefly explain what output compliance means and how we can calculate it for the circuit that we have designed for the question. So on the screen now, you've got a circuit using an NPN transistor in the middle. And this is basically a current sink circuit as you have a load over here. You have some resistance connected to the emitter of the transistor and you have some resistance connected to the base of the transistor. Now this load does not need to be a resistor, it could be anything. And strictly speaking, you might not need a RB or a RE resistor. I will show you what I mean when I do the calculations. Obviously from the question, we have a five volt supply and a 15 volt power supply. So we're using the five volt to drive the base as requested from the question. So a current sink is a crucial building block and it allows you to control a fixed current that flows through this direction over here. So a fixed current will flow through this load resistor in this example. And the fixed current flows regardless of what the load resistance itself is up to a limit. And that limit is basically what the compliance is referring to. In this exercise, we're basically going to look at some of the ways we need to basically bias the component. We're going to look at the active region and the limits for our component selection. So what happens in this circuit is you have five volts over here. You will have some base current that flows into this node and that base current will induce a voltage drop across this resistor over here. So the voltage drop on this resistor is going to be I B, which is the base current times the resistance R. So the voltage of the R B is going to be equal to the base current times the resistance from this node, which is the base to the emitter. You have approximately 0.6 volts and that's going to be, and that's going to be one of our assumptions. Another assumption that we're going to make is that the current that is flowing into the collector is a 50 multiple of the base current, which is flowing into here. Obviously, like I said before, the VBE voltage is going to be 0.6. So if you have 0.6 voltage drop over here, then basically we have some voltage drop here. We have 0.6 over here, then we can calculate the voltage drop on RE. And we can also use the voltage drop on RE and the resistance of RE to basically calibrate a 5 milliamp going in this direction over here. So from the question, we know that we need 5 milliamps to flow in this direction. So 5 milliamps is going to flow into our IC, IC being the collector current. We also know that the collector current is base times beta, and we have made an assumption that beta is going to be equal to 50. So we can calculate the minimum IB we need using the equation on the screen now. So IB is equal to IC, so 5 milliamps divided by beta. So that gives us a minimum IB current of 100 microamps. So we need at least 100 microamps to flow in this direction. If we know IC and IB, we can calculate IE, which is the current flowing out of the emitter of the transistor. So IE is equal to IB plus IC. So in this case, that's 5 milliamps plus 100 microamps, which gives us a emitter current of 5.1 milliamps. So the lowest value we can set for RB is zero ohms. So if we just completely link that out, we get five volts over here. That means that we're going to have approximately 4.4 volts over here, and we can calculate our resistance RE to get our five milliamps or 5.1 milliamps in this direction. We also have an upper limit for RB, which we can calculate using this equation over here which is basically our input, which is 5 volts minus 0 0.6 volts over here, divided by 100 microamps. As the minimum voltage we can have over here is zero, we basically get 4.4 volts across RB. And this is the absolute maximum. I wouldn't recommend going near it, but if it was above this value, you basically wouldn't get the current that you need, assuming your worst case beta. So maximum RB is basically 44 kilo ohms. So that's five minus 0 0.6, 0 0.6 being the VBE voltage. And basically we're 
you're assuming that RE doesn't exist or is linked out. We can also calculate the maximum RE value that we can have in this circuit. So minimum obviously is zero ohms for that. The maximum we can have on that is basically limited by the voltage that will appear on VE, which is limited by the voltage of the power supply. So if we were to put full five volts on here, we get 4.4 volts over here. So that's five volts minus the VBE. So five minus 0 0.6 divided by 5.1 milliamps, which is what we need in this direction. That gives us a maximum RE value of 862.7 ohms. So what we need to do now is basically select one of these components such that it falls within these limits. What I'm going to do is select RB first and then calculate RE for the question. I think the smaller the RB value you have, the larger the RE value is going to be. And that basically is better for the performance of this circuit because you're going to be less reliant on the NPN transistor characteristics and the internal parasitics of the component. So I would suggest selecting RB to be a smaller value and not very close to 44 kilo ohms, obviously. If you have any alternatives or disadvantages to this, let me know in the comment section below. So what I'm going to do is choose RB to be equal to one kilo ohm. I don't want that to be zero ohms because in a real life circuit, you wouldn't want to basically fully commit this source to a open junction like this, as you may possibly induce damage that you don't want when, when switched on very quickly or some other faults that can be induced and you would pass a lot of current in this direction if you didn't have the limiting resistor there. So I'm going to choose 1K for RB. So that gives me VRB as 0.1 volts. So if RB is 1K, we have 100 microamps flowing in this direction. So V equals IR and I get 0.1 volts across RB. Once I've calculated the voltage across RB, I can calculate the voltage on VE, which is basically VN minus VRB. So voltage drop on the RB resistor minus the VBE, which we assume to be 0.6. So that gives us a VE value of 4.3 volts. So the voltage operating here is going to be 4.3 three volts. So once we've worked out the voltage here, we also know what current we need through this resistor, which is 5.1 milliamps. We can calculate the component value for RE. So that's 4.3 divided by 5.1 milliamps. So I'm just using Ohm's law there. And that gives us a RE value of 843 ohms. So what we've done now is basically calculated RB and RE, which is all we need to do for this question. So this is the final circuit on the screen now. You can see I've got the 1K resistor there, 843 ohm resistor on my RE, which is going to be much larger than some internal resistance on the emitter over here which is important, but the book hasn't got to that point yet. So I won't explain it in too much detail. We have 15 volts for the power supply that's driving this load and we have five volts for the base. So that's basically the solution for the question in that we have designed the NPN current sync circuit that we need. The second part of the question, we need to calculate the output compliance. Output compliance is basically the operational load voltage range that can maintain the current that we have set in the circuit, that being five milliamps in this case. So what we can do to evaluate that is replace this with a power supply, which is basically a voltage drop on this node over here. And we can do that in simulation, but first of all, I'll show you how to calculate it. So VRE is 4.3 volts. So we know we got 4.3 volts over here. When a transistor is fully saturated, the voltage is typically is around 0.1 volts to 0.3. So for worst case, I'm going to assume 0.3 volt. So we can calculate what voltage we can have on V3 so that we can basically be under 15 volts, which is our power supply. And that's going to be our output compliance range. So 15 volts minus 4.3, which is dropped over here, minus 0.3, which is dropped on the transistor. And that gives us our compliance voltage range of 10.4 volts. So what that means is that this circuit will be able to deliver a fixed five milliamps until this component over here, this load reaches 10.4 volts. Now, if this was a resistor, we can calculate what that's going to be basically. So if you had 10.4 volts here with five milliamps going through it, that gives us a max load of 2080 ohms. So if there was a resistor value above 2080 ohms over here, this circuit would not be able to maintain five milliamps going down it. Anything less than 2080 ohms, it would be fine. And the output current would be fixed at five milliamps with whatever tolerance that we've got from our NPN transistor and the components over here. So on the screen now, you've got a simulation that I did. Basically what I've done is replace this load with a power supply. The power supply goes from zero volts, which is shown with the green line over here. And it goes from zero volts all the way up to 15 volts. So that's this line over here. And 
it does that over one second. So I basically did it as a pulse and I'm using the rise time to change the voltage. The current, which is shown in red, is the current through this resistor rather than this load, but it should be very similar anyway. So you can use the RE current anyway. The RE current will be slightly higher because of the base current, but it doesn't matter for what we're doing in this question. So as you can see, the voltage is rising on the load and up until this point over here our current through the re resistor is fixed at approximately 5 milliamps and as soon as the voltage on our load goes above 10.4 volts 10.5 volts roughly which is what we calculated before the output current or the load current starts to drop and we basically lose our output compliance so the output compliance range for this circuit is basically roughly 10.4 volts as we calculated in the question. For the second part, I showed you how we can do this using a resistor as well. So what I'm doing here is I've basically got a resistor that varies with the simulation time. So I've got resistance equals time times 3000 plus one. The plus one is necessary because I don't want to have zero ohms over here. And you can see that the resistance goes up and the axis for the resistance is over here. So it goes from one ohms to 3001 ohms over one second. And as soon as the resistance value reaches roughly 2080 ohms we lose our output compliance and we basically stop delivering 5 milliamps to the load the load in this case is a resistor at this point obviously it's a rough estimate the resistance value is roughly 2070 ohms but then you do have a lot of variation on your transistor and your base resistor then you do have a lot of variation on the transistor simulation anyway another thing i spoke about during the component calculation is that i said you can basically connect this power supply directly to the base so what I've done on this circuit simulation is set the base value to 100 microamps and obviously that means that I will have roughly 4.4 volts over here if you assume 0.6 volts on the base emitter node. Then we can recalculate the RE resistance and the calculation would give us 862.7 ohms rather than 842 which is what we had previously I think. And you can see in the simulation circuit here basically I'm changing the resistor again from 1 ohm to 3000 ohms over one second. And and we get a bit more output compliance over here but the output compliance does not change that much but you can see it's not as flat as it was in the previous circuit but then be careful with the y-axis on this as well because that can be misleading so if you can see that there are multiple ways of solving this you can also go very high value on this resistor and a low value on re but then i think what happens is you start becoming more dependent on the transistor characteristic which is not really a good idea because there can be a lot of variation with part to part and temperature so that's all i have to share with you today thank you for watching if you like the content don't forget to like comment and subscribe and share this video you can also support this channel by giving a super thanks so i can continue producing more content like this thank you for watching today bye for now